here. Let me do it. <laughs> Yeah, such a technical, technical guy. So, uh, well, first of all, thank you for the uh, exaggerated introduction about me. Uh, thank you for uh, showing your uh, support uh, for what I've done. And uh, don't be fooled by, you know, uh, appear to be, you know, an iPad and notebook and an iPhone is not me. Actually, you know, I haven't prepared anything for, I mean, in the, in the form of speech. Uh, I think uh, today is basically a time for us to uh, have a, I would say, general dialogue, you know, it's some, something uh, informal so that uh, we can have real exchange of ideas and uh, coming to, to, together and uh, brainstorm about what we can do uh, as a community to move forward on so many, so many important issues. Uh, in our city, in our province, and in our country. Um, maybe, you know, uh, it's better if some of you can ask me questions later so that uh, I can respond to more directly. But uh, at this point, I just want to share a few uh, observations about what has happened in the last few weeks, and perhaps that could be the starting point of our sharing uh, and ex exchange of ideas today. Well, I would uh, say that uh, the last few weeks is very eventful, right? So I think so many things happened within a short period of time, and uh, probably uh, nobody has, has uh, an expectation of how some of the things being turned out. Um, and if you ask me what did I see, I think a good thing came out from the uh, Debates, you know, and the controversy in the last few weeks. I think I would say that uh, it has opened up an opportunity for us to address a very important issue, which is the drug problem in our community. And also, it has become a um, uh, case illustration of how the participation of people can make change uh, in the decision making process. So, those are the two things I want to. To focus on. Um, of course, you know, in, uh, the whole thing, I would say that came out of the blue. Nobody expected uh, uh, this proposal of having a safe injection site uh, be brought forward uh, in the in, in, in city council. Um, and things seem to have happened very quickly. And um, the way that the motion was being passed and then the uh, strong reaction uh, came from the community and how the um, the whole thing was uh, brought to an end uh, by the statement made by the Vancouver Coastal Health. I think all those things were very, um, I would say that, uh, very colorful. And also um, some of the changes were kind of unexpected. Now, talking about the process, I think we have to understand that uh, uh, in, in Canada, uh, at the different levels of government, they have certain procedures and protocol for uh, things to be uh, carried out, for things to be uh, brought forward uh, uh, at different levels. So um, maybe in order for us to uh, participate in the uh, political process, uh, we have to understand those um, procedures and, and process. For example, you know, um, in the uh, event of, or in the, in the, in the uh, subject of uh, safe injection site, it was first being brought forth as a, a notice of motion uh, by two councillors. And it was first discussed um, in the general purpose committee meeting on February the 5th. Now that's a normal process. You know, any councillor can initiate a, a, a motion and to ask to be put onto the agenda. And that's what, what happened. So the two councillors move a motion, uh, give notice, and it was being put into the agenda on uh, February the 5th. Now, each city might be, might be different, but in the case of Richmond, we have the uh, system of committee meetings. We have a few um, standing committees, and uh, different councillors might sit on uh, different committees. And the general purpose committee is very special uh, because it's a, uh, all the members of council 
uh, sit on the committee. We have two committees that uh, all members of the council uh, were actually members, the um, general purpose committee and the uh, finance committee. Other than that, uh, committees such as parks and recreation, um, public works and uh, transportation, um, I mean, uh, and a few other committees, only a few members or a number of members sit on those committees, but it's not the, the full membership. So um, that's what happened on the February 5th. Uh, it was being discussed um, uh, in the General Purpose Committee meeting, and uh, the motion was put on to a vote. And you already know that uh, the results uh, 8 to 1. So I was the only person who voted against it. Uh, on the ground that uh, I felt the uh, motion itself was very problematic. Uh, briefly, you know, I think uh, the motion itself was very um, complex, uh, and uh, as we said, the devils in uh, in the details, right? So that uh, the, mo the first part of the motion seems to be uh, asking for for uh, exploration study about the practicability of having the injection site, but the rest of the motion part two. Two, two, three, five, six. Right. The other other section seems to be uh, very prescriptive, having a direction already. So that's why I vote against it on the ground that uh, this is a very complicated motion. Um, and to follow the process, once it was being discussed and voted uh, in the general Purpose committee meeting, it will be brought forward to the full council meeting the following week. We have the full council meeting uh, every two weeks. So that's why. The following week, uh, we we uh, brought it up to the um, full council meeting, and as you know, there was there was a time that uh, we let people participate in the discussion by making some presentations. Now, this this is what I like about about Richmond's uh, process. Um, in each council meeting, the public has the chance to make presentations. There are actually two opportunities. The first one is at the beginning of the meeting. The public can ask to make presentations even before we get onto the agenda. And at that time, uh, the public has the chance to speak on items on the agenda. So as long as it's on the uh, uh, agenda list of the date, you can, you can express your opinion or you can ask questions. So this is the first time that the public can ask questions or you know make their make their views be heard. So this is what I liked about the Richmond process. Um, people have that kind of uh, the participation uh, in a very democratic way. And the second time was towards the end of the, the meeting, the mayor will ask again uh, whether or not any person would like to make presentations on items not on the agenda. So in other words, even if something was not on the agenda, but it was important to you, or you know, you're puzzling about certain things, you can still have the chance to ask questions or to express your will. Now, of course, you know, uh, sometimes um, we may not be able to give you a feedback right away, but you know, once you make that kind of presentation, it's on record. And council has somehow to get back to you or to bring forward in future meetings to address those issues. So this is how we operate in the city council. So again, so uh, on February 12th, of February 11th and 12th, you know, uh, people had the opportunity to uh, make their views be heard. And over 100 people register and then actually uh, make their presentations. Either way, you know, for or against the proposal. And after that process, of course, you know, uh, council we will uh, have a debate among ourselves. Different city councils would express uh, their views, or they can raise questions. And again, as you witness, that uh, we have a, have a vote on the motion. And at that time, it was passed uh, by seven to two. Now, of course, the the um, process. Uh, was followed. Um, there's nothing I would I would suggest that uh, 
we could be critical of the, the process because you know we just followed it that was supposed to happen. But at the end, of course, we know that uh, the the um, men of the um, members of the public are still very unhappy about the uh, decision. They felt that uh, the the uh, opinions and their views uh, were not heard. So I think that's why uh, things, uh, many things still happen afterwards. But uh, as I said, uh, the first thing that was not expected was this matter was being brought forward uh, in the first place. It came off the blue. You know, there's no, no hint that uh, there's a need or there's an outcry from the, uh, from the public saying that we need that kind of uh, uh, service in uh, in the community, and also um, the, I mean, Vancouver Coastal Health had repeatedly uh, told us, told the city council that they did not feel that there was a need for that kind of a site in Richmond because the numbers did not justify um, that kind of a service as a priority. So again, there was no indica indication from uh, Vancouver Coastal Health saying that they would like to have a site uh, in Richmond. So after uh, Richmond City Council passed a motion, within a day, uh, Vancouver Coastal Health made a statement saying that they would not pursue um, the idea of having an injection site uh, in Richmond. Was it totally unexpected? Well, I don't think so. It's, it was not totally un unexpected uh, because you know it was consistent with the message that uh, they have given to us and publicly, you know, in the, in the past. They did not want to have, or they did not feel that there's a, a, a need as a priority for their kind of site. But I think what was unexpected was how fast they. Turn this around, yeah. right? Yeah. So within, I think wow. someone said thirteen hours, right? They yeah. immediately yeah. turned the whole thing around, and then they give a stop to the to the, to the uh, proposal. And after that, uh, uh, a few days later, uh, Richmond City, Richmond City, also made a statement saying that uh, since Vancouver Coast Health is not going to pursue the the, the, the uh, proposal, it will not uh, be very discussed uh, with. Vancouver Coast Health. Now, that seems to have brought the issue to an end, but not exactly, because that was a statement made by city administration. So staff is basically telling city council that, okay, we, we are not going to pursue any further because the direction given to them was talk to Vancouver Coast Health to explore the idea. And now staff said that they got the idea from the Vancouver Coast Health that this is not going to happen. So that's why they said we are not going to do it. But there's still something left behind, which is the motion itself. The motion was a direction to staff saying that do it, right? Then staff said I mean, we couldn't move ahead because you know the other party was, has, already, has already said no. So that's why, um, again, in the in the last council meeting, um, Mayor Malcolm Brody, on behalf of council, made a statement saying that now city council is not going to pursue this further. So this is the last piece to put the whole issue to rest, so that uh, I would say we can be almost assured that this is. Not going to be explored further at least i would say in the next few years now of course nobody can predict you know what will happen uh, in life uh, further down the road but from the um reaction that we got from from the people from the um refusal from Vancouver coast health and from the statement being made by city by the mayor on behalf of city council i would say that uh, it's pretty uh, say that uh, in the in the next few years this will not uh, be the topic of this discussion again. Of course, nobody can guarantee hundred percent, but I would be very very surprised that this will be 
brought up again uh, by city council. Um, so this is, the, as I said, this is first thing which was unexpected. Uh, the, the issue, the way the issue has been brought up, the uh, response uh, by, I mean, from when uh, Goku's how how fast they they put a stop to this this thing. But I think there's another surprise in the whole process is the, this response of the people in the community. <coughs> I participate in the um, General Purpose Committee meeting on February the 5th. And then we finished our meeting around 5, 5.30 or 6 o'clock, you know. But then at around 9 o'clock, somebody asked me, did you know that there was an online petition going on? I said, no, I don't know. And then he showed, showed it to me. And by that time, almost 2,000 people signed the petition already. I would say that this is a surprise to, to, to many people. To have an online petition initiated by a quote unquote, just a ordinary <coughs> member of the public, right? I, I, I knew that it was only being initiated by a mother who was not active in the political arena in the past. But out of her con concern of um, her children, the welfare of her children, she initiated the, the um, petition. And within it, was that, in, that it, was, it was less than 24 hours, 24 hours when I, when I got, the, got the information. And to have almost 2,000 people sign the petition, I have to say that I never see that before. And then, of course, you know, at the end, we, we know that there were over 20,000 people yeah. right. signed the petition. Right. Again, I think if, if, if this is not historical, I think it's so rare to see this kind of a strong and fast reaction from the public on such an issue. So, and again, you know, we, we, we know how the whole thing <coughs> unfolded, and then how, as I mentioned earlier, you know, how it was being uh, brought to a stop. What I'm saying is that this unexpected process of public participation is an indication that, as the um, MC said earlier, together, you know, we can bring changes. One person may not be able to, 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 to bring changes. And, you know, that's why I said to you, I don't deserve the, the, the uh, appreciation that, uh, that you, you people gave me. Because when I look back, what I've done is really, I was the visual blower. I was just a person, you know, hitting, hitting a gong. So, you know, hey, hey, come on, you know, something is coming. So actually, it's you guys, you know, you people who, who came together and work on an issue that was so close to your heart that you get this result. So I'm only the person who waved the, 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 the yeah, yeah, we said, come on, you know, yeah, something's coming. But actually, I did not do the work. It's everybody that, that you know, being part of the process that have achieved this. So I think this is a vivid example of that people can make change when they come together and when they take actions to ask accountability, accountability from their elected officials, we can have results. And I would also suggest that uh, this is a good example. Never say never. Don't just say, oh, nothing will happen. And you know, uh, it's a, it's, I know some, some people, even today, you know, when I talk to some people um, about the, the whole process, they said, oh, you know, uh, uh, I did not get it. We did not get exactly the result we want. But yes, you know, we may not be able to get the results that we want at this time or at one, any one time. But in the long process, perhaps this will bring greater results that uh, we expect. As I said earlier, one good thing came out from this debate is that 
it opens up an, an opportunity for us to talk about the drug policy in Canada. Right? So, because of this event, people become aware of the, the situation. And the fact that Canada has piloted so many drug programs in the last 20 years. And I think it's time for us to ask for results, ask for an assessment of whether or not those programs or policies have been working. So we may not be able to win the, uh, the voting on council, right? It's still 72, uh, you know, when we get the, the vote on the safe injection site. However, I think because of that kind of the debate in a small city like Richmond, I think nobody expected that uh, the, the debate in Richmond could become an international news, right? And people in New York telling me they, 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 they saw the, the news. People in Asia, in Hong Kong, some of my friends said they saw the news. I think nobody would expect it in the beginning that a small place like Richmond and a relative, relatively small issue of injection site could expose the issue on the drug crisis in Canada. So I'm hopeful that you know um, this is not the end of it. This is probably the beginning of changes that we can we can bring about. So with that, I, I think I better stop, right? And um, let's. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>